I just uh, unbox everything, and this is what it looks like. It does come with uh, two big sticker sheets for the sides, also a left and a right. For assembling the truck, I, I recommend taking the body off just to, you know, make it a little easier to access the screws for the uh, shocks. Some stuff you can see a little bit better. The body comes off real easy. The body's obviously attached to the roll cage, and the roll cage is attached to the mainframe with pins. You're going to have four pins in the back, two pins on each side underneath this body. If we look back there, you'll see two pins holding it, and also two pins underneath the front, um, right here, and the side ones right there. Let's just take all those out, and then it basically just pulls off. You know, spread the uh, sides apart, and pulls right off. If you cut the zip ties that hold these parts up, um, what I did is I just I used a tire and a piece of the packing foam as a stand. If you have a nicer, uh, big like a six by six block of wood or whatever else, you can make your own stand. I'm just just it'll work. You know, this is basically what you're gonna have to do to attach the front axle. Um, this little axle pin was in here. I just unscrewed it with um, a four millimeter Allen wrench. And you're gonna wanna install this drive shaft onto the uh, pinion gear of the front uh, differential. So when you do that, you're just gonna slide this uh, brake rotor over this, slide this into place. You're gonna wanna put some grease. Um, if you have it, a little film of grease this way, when you do have to take it apart eventually, it's not rusted together or anything like that. So basically slide this over, put the pin back in, um, you know, screw it back together with some, uh, put a little bit of Loctite on here. A blue Loctite will work. Once you get this in, you're going to slide the other side of the shaft into the rear output drive shaft of the transmission. You're going to want to put grease also on here too, a little bit of film grease. Nothing major, you don't have to goob it on, just a little film, wave it on your fingers. That's going to let it slide in and out of here a little nicer when the suspension goes up and down. It also won't let it get stuck in there. Um, at the same time, I'm sliding this in. I'm going to get ready to put the four links to hold it, that holds it all together on the main four links. All the hardware for the four links is already installed on here, so we're just going to unscrew all that from here. These are for the lower sh shock mount. Just unscrew all that, get it ready to install, and I'll show you how that looks. I just installed the uh, front drive shift onto the uh, front pinion gear output shift. I'm using that four millimeter pin screw right there, set screw. Um, before I put it on, I slid the uh, disc brake over it and make sure you, uh, when you tighten it, that, you know, that the rotor can slide around on it. When this rotor is in place with the brake caliper, it's actually going to help. It's going to hold that pin from coming loose anyway. So uh, you, you could put Loctite on it, but don't go crazy because the rotor does hold it in anyway. So I slid that together, put a little bit of grease on the shaft, and then the four links I put on. Um, I removed the hardware that already came on the axles, and then I just reinstalled the hardware um, with the... Uh, or links in between the, the bolts and the cone washer. There's these special cone washers. You want to pay, make sure the tapered end of the cone washer, the smaller end goes on the inside, like it goes on toward the uh, ball link of the uh, suspension arm. So that when the suspension pivots up and down a lot, it lets it move freely. And also there's tapered ends on the top ones. There's a big tapered link here, the pointy side where it tapers in, make sure that goes on to where the ball link goes. And just reinstall all that onto here. You could put some Loctite on these bolts because these screw right into an aluminum piece. So they could come loose over time. So definitely put some blue Loctite on these bolts before you put them in. Um, these ones down here have a big nylon, like a lock nut insert on it. So they're not going to come loose. You don't have to lock make these ones. And that's it. Slide all those four on, assemble it, and that's going to hold the whole suspension on. And you can see it's all there. Now we're going to want to put the shocks on. Um, the lower bolts we just remove from here, they come on the axle. The upper bolts for the shocks already come on the frame. We're just going to spin the nut off. And it's going to be a little washer. It's going to go on. And then that's it. This blue part, you leave this uh, rubberish, hard plastic part. That's the upper shock mount bushing that you just leave on. You're going to slide the shock right over there. And the bottom shock end right through here and put the bolt. And then just install the shocks. You know, like I said, real easy. Just put that right on here. With a little washer and the nut, these are uh, these have uh, lock nuts in them, so you don't have to lock like that. The bottom just screws right through there. Find another lock nut on the back, so no lock tight there. Also, just do that on both sides, and now your suspension will really be held together nice. You don't need to support it anymore with the other tire underneath there. And now we're going to put the sway bar links on. 
Hmm, let me just install the sway bar links. Like I said, using that long bolt uh, for the bottom. Definitely put Loctite on that one. That's just going into a threaded uh, axle. So there's no nut in the back of that to hold it. So I definitely put Loctite on that one. The upper link is going to have this little set screw, which you also you want to put Loctite on that. And this you could slide on and make it nice straight up and down vertical is the stock kind of position for it. Um, if you do want to move it more in, this way bar will work even more. Uh, make it a little stiffer, less lean, and more out, more body lean, and better for crawling, more suspension is going to move. So you could just put it where you like. Um, I found a straight up and down setting, like about a quarter inch from the end. Seems to work nice for overall driving. A little bit of everything. You just do that on both sides of the truck. And then your basically your front suspension is all done. And the two servos, two servo wires you could plug in. And you'll see the harness um, right in here. You could just plug those in to either one of these two outputs. I'm just going to match the uh, black. There's a black end on this, and there's a black end or brown on this. Make sure that matches up and just plug it in. Doesn't matter which one, which wire goes into. Um, both servos can go into either either one. And that's it. Then you're basically your front suspension's done, except for the um, brake uh, cable and, and brake caliper, which we're going to do next. And at this time, if you want, you can install your whole rear setup. It all installs the exact same way as the front. Um, every part's the same. Basically, the only thing different from the front and the back is the all the stuff to, that makes the gearing setup. But the axle tubes and everything underneath that, the way the four link goes on, the shocks go on, the way the sway bars go on, that's all the same front and rear. All right, I just went ahead and finished connecting up all the back suspension. And now we can put the uh, brake calipers on. And we're going to adjust the cables to make sure it all is working properly. The cables are going to be routed up through here. I'm going to show you how to do that. 